Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Contracted Times. I was working in a small tech startup ages ago, when I was just fresh out of uni as a grad first, then as a software engineer. At first, the company was fantastic. I was in the R&D department, and we were making some cool bleeding edge stuff. Then the company ran into trouble and had a shake up. They fired everyone in R&D except for the lowest paid worker, aka me. They then brought on a new GM who was not a tech guy. At this point our product worked pretty well, but the sales guys would promise the world whilst we could only maybe provide Iceland. I used to come in at 9 or 10ish, so not a morning person, and finish between 7 to 10 pm. Also, at least 3 to 5 times a month I needed to travel to clients and needed to be there for a meeting at 9 so left at 4 am. All good, got the work done and everyone was happy. Enter our new GM. I've noticed you come in late on many occasions in the last few weeks. What is going on? I have never had a set start time, just do the work and get things done. I'm not late because I don't have an official start time. That's bonkers, you're contracted for 8.30 to 5. I need you to be in for 8.30. So I came in at 8.30 every day and left at 5. As a result, I got a lot less work done. And customers had to work around me arriving at midday. Sorry, my manager doesn't allow me to leave before half 8, so nothing I can do. The GM pulled me into his office, saying he'd had complaints about me not being available to customers. I told him I don't understand why. He told me to work at 8.30 and I'm doing that. He says, well, but customer visits don't count. Well, he should have told me that. Then he complained that my productivity had gone down in the last few months. Well, sure, I'm working my contracted hours as per instructions, no longer pulling 9 to 12 hours a day. He asked me to ignore his instructions and go back to the way we were. I informed him I found a new job. The next story is called No Overtime. This happened a few years ago. I worked for a large brokerage firm as an hourly employee. Every day I worked for lunch and did at least one hour overtime in order to handle the heavy workload my team received. The extra hour of overtime was beyond normal business hours, but I would also get another 45 minutes of overtime for working for lunch. Not only me, but the three other people on my team did this as well. We were all fine with it, as the overtime pay really helped us out and we were able to leave work with our task for the day completely finished. The task was super repetitive, so there was really no fear of burnout from us. The thing about working as an hourly employee at this company was that we would have to clock out for lunch for at least 15 minutes, even if we worked through the determined hour of it. Again, this was completely cool with us, as the overtime pay more than made up for 15 minutes of lost pay each day. This system worked really well for about 2 years. But then we got a new manager. He was a jerk and wanted to make everything as efficient as possible. We knew that he was going to come after our overtime pay. The best part about him becoming the manager is that he knew absolutely nothing about the jobs we do. He was completely clueless about the department as a whole actually and how high our workflows were. Three weeks into this new manager starting he calls a meeting for us all and says that no matter what we should be taking an hour lunch each day and should be doing no overtime. While it seems like a nice thing for him to do to give us a break, he clearly was coming after our overtime pay. I had questions, such as how he expected everything to get done every day without the working full lunch and overtime we put in. His response was, we hired you all for 40 hour work weeks, so that is what you will work for. Anything more is practically stealing from the company. So there goes our overtime pay. From that day forward I took the hour long lunch and made sure to have at least one other teammate tag along. I also began leaving precisely on time every single day once my time was completed, regardless of how much work still had to be done. As you may have guessed, things started to back up big time. Our manager started to sweat, asking why we were so backed up, and I sat there saying that we can only do so much in a 40 hour week. This continued for about 2-3 to three months. Then we randomly received an email from our boss's boss. He was saying that overtime was allowed again and that one hour lunch breaks were no longer mandatory but they recommend we still do. Instead of firing more people to help with the backup of tasks, giving overtime to people who were already trained was clearly the better option in this situation. It was also much cheaper. At least someone in management had some sense before it got too out of hand. The third story is called Parent Meeting. As a school principal, 
one of my responsibilities is to solicit parents to join the Parent Advisory Council. In fact, it is written into law with specific regulations as to composition, frequency of meetings, etc. One of the requirements is that the meetings have to be held at a time convenient to parents. A decade or so ago, I was the principal of a small rural high school that was in a town that served as the hub for a larger area. Most parents of the school worked in town, but lived out in the countryside, some as much as an hour away. Because of this, the only way to get parents to attend meetings was to hold them right after school at 4pm. Parents were either done working themselves or could make arrangements to dip out a little early, attend the meetings and get home at a decent time. Particularly in winter, this was important, as it was pretty dark and snowy on the rural roads. Partway through the school year, the district hired a new superintendent who had oversight of the high schools. She had come from a large urban school district and didn't fully understand or appreciate how a rural school district worked. At our first meeting with all the principals, she asked each of us for a summary report of school operations, including parent meetings. I dutifully submitted mine as requested and forgot about it. A few weeks later, I got a call from the superintendent. We chatted, got to know each other a little bit and then got down to the reason for her call. I see from your report that you hold your parent meetings at 4 pm, she said. Yeah, it's the best time so that everyone gets home at a decent hour, I said. A lot of people up here have long drives home, myself included. She took this to mean I had scheduled the meetings around my personal convenience. Well, when I was a principal, I always held them at night so more parents could attend. I think you need to start holding your meetings later. Well, I don't think parents will attend. No, no, the meetings have to be open to all parents and held at a time convenient to them, she insisted. I think you should start at 7 pm to make sure all parents have the opportunity to come. Now, in a big city school, this works fine, as most families live within a short drive. But the boss is the boss. Okay, no problem. Say, why don't you attend the next one to introduce yourself to the parents, I offered. She immediately agreed and I sent a calendar invitation for a month hence at 7 pm. My school was located about a 90 minute drive north of the administrative offices where the superintendent worked and she herself lived about an hour's drive south of it. She was in for a long day. The day of the meeting rolled around and the superintendent arrived at the school around 6.45 pm in anticipation of the meeting. She brought donuts and cookies and I supplied coffee and water. I had set up the library with a big conference table and seating for 30. No one showed. I suppressed the urge to say, I told you so. The last story is called, Keep the Seat. More than 10 years ago, I made the mistake of booking a connecting flight on American Airlines. I was traveling alone with two toddlers, so I booked three seats next to one another. As we check in to the first flight, they give me the six boarding passes and I am upset to see that we are spread out over a whole section for the second flight, or middle seats of course. It's a different airline, the one I bought the tickets from, so they claim they cannot change it. So first thing during the layover, I go to the counter. Oh, we can't do anything, they will fix it at the gate. Rush to the gate? Sorry, there's nothing we can do, the stewardess will take care of you. Of course, I made a point to be at the front of the line, all the while trying to entertain cranky kids who want to ride the train some more. The gate person knew the issue, but announces that families with young kids are no longer seated early and will not make a difference for me. Eventually, we board, and one of our free rows still has two seats open. I drop the kids and go to find the stewardess. Oh, there's nothing I can do, you will just have to ask them to move yourself. The lady who is standing there waiting for her seat grumbles but takes one of my boarding passes. The gentleman will not move, no matter how much I plead. Q, malicious compliance. I thanked him for allowing me to relax. He made a confused face. Then I opened our onboard backpack and started pointing things out. This is the portable DVD player. That should keep the older one entertained for a while. Here are the books to read to the younger one. These are the snacks. Make sure you feed them on the way up. Otherwise, their ears will hurt. You can get me for bathroom runs and diaper changes. As I got ready to thank him again for volunteering for childcare, he gave up and took the other seat. I have no idea what I would have done if he had stuck it out. I wasn't going to have my toddler sit with a stranger where I can't see what was going on. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and would like to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. 
I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.